Warning, read and follow all labels and the owner's manual. Let's walk you through lighting, setting, and extinguishing the flame for a typical OxyFuel system. Before you light a torch, always purge the system to eliminate the danger of having mixed gases in the hoses. To purge, open the torch fuel valve and let fuel run through the system for just a few seconds. Then close the fuel valve and repeat the process for the oxygen side of the system. Once the system has been properly set up and you've completed purging, the torch is safe and ready to light. If you're using a combination style torch with a cutting attachment, make sure the oxygen preheat valve on the cutting attachment is closed. Then open the oxygen valve on the torch handle. Open it completely to avoid restricting the oxygen flow. Make sure the torch tip is pointed in a safe direction and there are no combustible materials nearby. Now, open the fuel valve on the torch handle about 1 8 to 1 quarter turn and use a friction style striker at the torch tip to ignite the fuel. To properly set an oxyacetylene flame, continue opening the fuel valve just until the soot disappears. This is the correct amount of acetylene gas flow. Now, open the oxygen preheat valve on the cutting attachment. Watch for what's known as the secondary flame or acetylene feather to recede until it's even with the primary cone as you see here. This is a neutral flame, and here is what a properly set oxyacetylene torch flame looks and sounds like. There are three basic flame settings. A neutral flame has the proper ratio of oxygen and fuel gas for both to be consumed in the combustion process. If we add too much oxygen, we create what's known as an oxidizing flame. Note how the primary flames become very sharp and you hear a loud hissing sound. If we supply the flame with too much fuel or too little oxygen, the result is what's known as a carburizing flame. Remember, we want a neutral flame, and when using acetylene fuel gas, that can be achieved quickly in a single step. Alternate fuels, however, such as propane, require several steps to properly set the flame. To set an oxypropane flame, open the fuel valve about 1 8 to 1 quarter turn and ignite the fuel. Now, adjust the fuel flow until the flame just starts to separate from the tip and add oxygen just as you would with acetylene. The difference is that with LP gas, we need to force the fuel through the tip for maximum efficiency and to prevent tip starvation, which can cause the tip to overheat. So with alternate fuels, we need to work the flame up by slowly adding more fuel and oxygen until we have a neutral flame with the fuel gas at or near full flow. This is what a properly set oxypropane flame looks and sounds like. Use this process with natural gas, MAP, propane or propylene based fuels as well. One way to see if you have a neutral flame with a cutting tip is to place the flame close and perpendicular to a metal surface. The preheat flames will create a star pattern. The length of the legs of the star should be about two to three inches long with clear definition. If the flame is oxidizing, the star pattern will be short and sharp like this. If the flame is carburizing, the star pattern will be long and bushy like this. Each tip style and size is designed for use at specific gas pressures and flows, so keep a tip chart or manual handy to identify the correct pressure settings for the tip you're using. When the pressures are correct and the flame is set properly, the tip itself will remain relatively cool. Incorrect pressures or inadequate flow can starve the tip, causing it to overheat and eventually ignite mixed gases inside the tip. We've now learned how to purge the torch and how to safely and properly light the torch and set the flame. Now, let's walk through the steps involved in shutting down the system. To correctly shut down a Miller Smith brand torch, first, turn off the oxygen valve, then turn off the fuel valve. Other manufacturers may recommend different procedures, so it's best to find out what's recommended for the equipment you're using. After extinguishing the flame, close the cylinder valves and bleed the gases from the system. Drain the oxygen by opening the torch valve. 
Watch until both needles on the oxygen regulator gauges drop to zero. Then, be sure to close the torch oxygen valve. Next, back out the oxygen regulator adjusting screw to the out and off position. Now, repeat the process for the fuel side of the system. This OxyFuel system has now been properly shut down. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in our How To Video series to learn more about how to safely and effectively use OxyFuel torches and other gas equipment.